Welcome. So today we're going to talk about nutrition. If you remember the characteristics of living organisms, we said living organisms grow, respire, uh, feed, are sensitive, they reproduce. Now, today we're going to handle one of those characteristics, which is nutrition. And um, all living organisms feed. Of course, the feeding differs from one form to another, as we are going to see, but they still feed. Therefore, nutrition refers to the process by which living organisms obtain, consume, and use food substances to maintain their different life processes. We know what happens when you do not eat for 10 days. You feel so weak. Why? Because you do not have the energy you need to carry out the different life processes like movement. Okay? So, feeding is very, very key. Now, there are two major modes of nutrition. There are two major modes of nutrition. The first one being autotrophic nutrition. one being heterotrophic and we're going to talk about this in detail but briefly autotrophic in biology trophos means you know, something to do with feeding or nourishment okay so this one is nourishment and auto is self so these are organisms that feed themselves meaning that make their own food so this is a mode of nutrition where organisms make their own food using some materials and energy okay now these materials sometimes differ from one organism to another those autotrophic organisms now there are two major categories of autotrophic nutrition which are which are photosynthesis and chemosynthesis now, synthesis comes from synthesizing which means making okay so this is making and this one is photo for light. So that is light making? No. Now, photosynthesis refers to the form of autotrophic nutrition where organisms make their own food using carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, water and sunlight energy now it means that without the energy from sunlight it's impossible for these organisms to make their own food and this food is always a carbohydrate as we're going to see about more about that okay so we shall talk about this in detail as we go on, the next one is what we have called chemosynthesis and what is chemosynthesis? It still has to do with synthesis and chemo. Now, chemosynthesis is the process by which organisms make their own food using energy obtained from chemical reactions. Energy obtained from chemical reactions. Now, some chemical reactions produce energy. For example, have you ever maybe held a detergent, a powder detergent, say, Omo, Aerial, or Magic, or any other? If you add water to it, you feel some heat coming from it. You feel some warmth. It means that water and the, the, the detergent have produced 
energy, which is heat energy. Now, there are some other chemical reactions that happen, and these organisms use that energy from the reaction to make their own food. And we are going to see more about that in detail now. Some of the examples that carry out chemosynthesis are the ones we call chemosynthetic bacteria. And some of the organisms that carry out photosynthesis are green plants and bacteria, which we call photosynthetic bacteria. So we have said this one includes green plants and bacteria. The photosynthetic bacteria. In a nutshell, that's what we can say about autotrophic nutrition. And now, let's go to heterotrophic nutrition. Purpose, again, for feeding or nourishment. Okay, this one. Heteros for other. Okay, hetero. For other. Now, other feeding, mm, close. But yes, heterotrophic nutrition is the kind of nutrition where organisms depend on uh, on already made food. Okay, they do not make their own food. They actually depend <coughs> majorly on the autotrophic organisms. So the, these ones depend on already manufactured food compounds. Actually, in a way, one way or another, we all depend on those that can make their own food, which we also refer to as producers. Autotrophic uh, organisms can also be referred to as producers. Now, heterotrophs are incapable of making their own food. They cannot, so they depend on food that has already been uh, made. Examples include you and I, that is animals, insects, insectivorous plants, those are plants that feed on insects, and most bacteria. Now, heterotrophic nutrition can be divided into five major categories, and these are These are the major categories of autotrophic of heterotrophic nutrition. Beginning with saprotrophic nutrition or what we have called saprotrophism. Now, this is the type of feeding in which organisms feed on dead decaying matter. Okay. Uh, if you can imagine anything that dies weather or maybe food that you can throw away if you watch that food for some time time comes and you find it is gone it didn't disappear mysteriously some organisms which we may or may not see fed on it okay and left a little a little debris now that is what we refer to as saprophytic uh, feeding so organisms that are saprophytic actually are helpful in cleaning our environment to remove dead matter. That is about saprotrophic nutrition. And now we go to phagocytosis. Phagocytosis has cyto in it and phago. 
Zaito for sale and fago fed for feeding or eating. So it is sell eating. Now, phagocytosis refers to the process by which cells or unicellular organisms um, engulf food. Okay, for example, the white blood cells and amoeba. So this organism, this cell, maybe what person or amoeba finds a food particle and encloses it in, and after enclosing it in, it now actually cuts it out like that. So that we have a vacuum inside that has this particle. Let's assume the particle is like this. It is now inside the cell. Okay. After that, digestion occurs inside the cell. Okay. It occurs so that this cell is broken down. This particle is broken down and some materials go out of this vacuole which we call the food vacuole. Okay. All the way into the cytoplasm of the cell. After which the undigested material, the ones that have not been broken down, find their way to the cell membrane after which after which well they, 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 they apart break uh, they are released to to this surrounding here which might be blood or water whatever it might be okay so the materials now are released to the surrounding this cell moves on to find more food and this cycle repeats itself for as long as it is feeding. So phagocytosis deals with cells or unicellular organisms that engulf food particles. Number three is parasitism. Have you heard of parasites where someone calls their friend a parasite at school? What they mean by that is this person keeps asking from them but they never return well as far as nutrition is concerned you wouldn't call your friend a parasite why because parasitic nutrition is the form of nutrition in which an organism feeds on another which you call the host so a parasite feeds on another organism which we call a host but brings harm to the to the host for example um, the, some people can get ringworms on their skin ringworms those are fungi feeding on someone's skin but it causes them to feel irritated. Eh? Something applies to with ticks and cows. Of course, the ticks are enjoying the blood, but cows are becoming malnourished. So, this organism feeds, but at the cost of another, of the host. That is parasitism, mutualism. Mutualism is just an English word that has a mutual in it. Now, Mutualistic uh, feeding or nutrition is it's a nutritional relationship between two organisms where one organism gets food or nourishment but the other also benefits in another way. For example, we have nice bacteria in our guts. Well, we eat and they eat a little of that. They help us make vitamin, okay? They help us make vitamin B12 and K. So, myself and the bacteria in my gut, eh? we are both benefiting. Much as it gets the food, I get the vitamins. Some applies to um, the, the, the relationship between uh, the bacteria in the root nodules of beans and the bean. This bacteria get the food the beans get the nitrates that they need so bad to
to make their different uh, body tissues. So, well, both of them benefit. That's why we call it mutualism. Important, it's a feeding relationship. Some applies to this. So you can find that in your body you have some form of a parasitic nutrition and some form of a mutualistic relationship where I have pork tapeworms or beef tapeworms, those are parasites, where I have um, bacteria that help me make vitamin B12, that is mutualism. And lastly is the holozoic form of nutrition. Now, it differs from all these other ones that we have mentioned. For example, this is dead food, um, dead organisms. This is cell eating. This is feeding one another, but at the cost, at the harm of the host. This one is feeding one another organism where that other organism also benefits. Now, this one involves actually taking in food digesting it and and adjusting out that which has not been digested so these organisms actually literally put food into into their mouth and it goes through a system and so there's digestion taking 